Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now, lots of times when I bring out a lever action Winchester, I talk about bringing it back to its natural environment to do some shooting. Now, today we're going to shoot a lever action Winchester that's about as far from its natural environment as it could possibly be. These 1895 Russian contract muskets. Now, recently I picked up a really nice high condition uh, Russian musket, so it's time to part with my old one. It's going going to get packaged up and sent out to a customer here in the next day or two. So I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to bring it out here and, and shoot it one last time before it goes away. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about muskets. Because every time I do a, an episode on a lever action musket, I get comments from people saying, well that's not a musket. It doesn't load from the muzzle. It's not a smooth bore. And while um, the uh, Early muskets were smooth bores and they were muzzle loaders. That doesn't mean that they all are. Musket doesn't mean a smooth bore muzzle loader. Musket is a, a term for a military style rifle. Um, typically a full wood with a bayonet lug. Um, you know, they're, they're just set up for military use. And that's what constitutes a, a musket. There are Winchester muskets in just about every lever action variety, 66, 73, there's even a few 76 and 86 muskets, a few 94 and 92 muskets, and a whole lot of 95 muskets. There were several different versions of the, of the musket 1895 Winchesters. There's even Marlin lever action muskets, there's Savage 99 lever action muskets, so, you know, if you have that misnomer that it has to be a smooth bore muzzle loader, that's not the case at all. There's a whole lot of more modern muskets out there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, the Russian contract muskets. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail because there's been a lot written about them. Um, there's a, a fellow by the name of Michael Carrick who wrote a, a chapter in the... the uh, Kassab and Dunbar 1895 Winchester book that's really fabulous and just by chance it was Mike who I bought this particular high condition musket from just recently. Um, great information in, in that book and, and if you're interested in the, in the muskets themselves, um, that whole chapter, there's some great pictures and great history. Mike's a, a firearms historian and author so um, he really went all out and, and actually some of the stuff that I have here on the table is, is pictured in that 1895 book as well. So most of us know kind of a little bit about the 1895 uh, Russian contract musket that the Russians were really needing rifles bad when World War I broke out. Um, they were they were signing contracts for all sorts of different stuff and Winchester was kind of at the tail end of production of the 95s. They had really tried to get musket contracts with the US Army and with other foreign governments and just hadn't had much success but this Russian contract came along and kind of revived the 95 and, and extended its life for another oh 15 or 20 years and uh, gave gave uh, Winchester a really good contract. All in all there was about 293,000 of these 1895 muskets made. And they, you know a, as a comparison there were only around 125, 130,000 of the 1895 sporting rifles. So there's almost or there's twice as many or more than twice as many um, of the Russian contract muskets as there were sporting rifles in 1895. Unfortunately, they got used really, really hard and, and not many of them survived today. And, and of course, not many of them came back to the United States. Um, so they're, they're really hard to come by now. The values of them have just skyrocketed lately. And I, and I think that's because of the crossover interest between um, lever action collectors and, and the military surplus collectors. But the, the values lately have just kind of been a little breathtaking what you see them selling for these days. I paid quite a lot more for the, the uh, one I just purchased than I had for this, this older one. So before we get started, um, let's take a little closer look and then, then we'll, we'll put a, a round or two down range, see where they're shooting and then maybe make a little red mist. So here are these two Russian contract muskets and you can see the, the one in the foreground closest to you is 
really in exceptional condition. The wood is beautiful. The bluing is, is in great shape. We've got a, a little bit of toning on the receiver, but, but not much. This is a gun that, that didn't see a lot of action overseas, I, I'm sure. And if it went overseas, it, it didn't get used in combat. Now, the, the one in behind here um, is well used. And we have some, some indications we'll talk about that this one did see extensive use in combat. Um, you know, these were used both by the Russians in World War I, and, and then um, a lot of them went to Finland, and actually the Finns used them against the Russians in what, the Winter War, I guess they called it, leading up to World War II. And then uh, a lot of them got sent to uh, the Spanish Civil War, and, and those will have a different mark, usually a different cartouche on the buttstock. But anyway, we've got a, a really a high condition, nice one to shoot today, and one that's seen a lot of action in the past. Now let's talk a little bit about some of this auxiliary equipment that came with these Russian muskets. Now, of course, if we're going to have a musket, we need to have a bayonet. And in this case, there were two different versions of the bayonets that went with the Russian contract. This is a, a pretty scarce variety here. This was the first issue that, or the first shipment of bayonets that went with these over to Russia. And the Russians really didn't like this shorter blade. So in the next shipments and in, in the bulk of the production of these russian musket bayonets are a 16 inch blade rather than the 8 inch blade that we had in the first shipment let's pull this baby out and there we have our, our 16 inch bayonet this 8 inch one actually mike picked it up and had it shipped from Russia and it's absolutely mint condition. You can see the, the bluing on the on the scabbard. The leather is just in beautiful shape, wood. Um, just an excellent, excellent example of a, um, a first model Russian contract bayonet. And then of course they had a, a pull through cleaner in, in the buttstock compartment. And this, this tool is a very hard one to find, and it still had this one in, in uh, the musket that we just bought. This is a dandy little multi-tool for working on these muskets in the field. Um, predates the Leatherman by quite a lot. <laughs> and then, of course, you probably see on these muskets uh, that's a um, feature that's really distinctive, and that's these, these clip guides here. And, and so... The Russians were using the, the Mosin Nagants, or Nagants, or however you pronounce that, and, and they had a stripper clip. And so we have the same stripper clip that they works in these clip guides here. So they machined out part of the receiver and put these clip guides on, and then this Mosin stripper clip fits right in there in that in those clip guides. So this is one of the those uh, rifles that has both a magazine and a clip so we can't get in trouble with with our terminology on this one okay so we've kind of looked these over and it's time to uh, maybe go ahead and, and take a few shots with them okay so first off we're going to take one shot with each of these old muskets and just see where they are on paper before we go wasting a bunch of ammo chasing jugs around Okay, here we go. This is the one that's been well used, and I've shot it before, but I don't remember where it shot. Okay, let's go see where we are. All right, so let's go ahead and try this high condition one. Been kind of looking forward to shooting this old girl. Now this 7.62 by 54 rimmed is not a terribly uh, powerful cartridge. So it is a fairly comfortable one to shoot. Now, the 95, some people say they don't handle recoil well. Well, I think that's more they've maybe shot the, the heavier hitters. Um, these are these are a pleasant one to shoot about like any other hunting rifle your 308 30-06 area All 
Okay, we'll go see where that one's hidden and then uh, we'll set up some jugs. Okay, so the chamber was so tight on that newer musket that I got, I really had trouble closing the bolt and then I had trouble um, ejecting the cartridge. So I think we're just gonna put it away. It may be a shot, it's only cartridge. And when I, uh, when I ship this one off, I hate to admit it, but I also have another one back at the house for a shooter, so. <laughs> when it rains, it pours. I, I like 95, so. Oh, there's my spent case. Okay, so now we're gonna put in this uh, charge of 762 by 54 with our stripper clip. <laughs> That's wonderful. I think all 95 should be equipped with a stripper clip, don't you? Okay, so let's see here. We'll shoot up close there. It's shooting a little high and I've got adjusted all the way down, so I'm going to have to shoot at the base of everything here. <laughs> that worked. Uh-oh. This one's a little bit stiff, too. Beat a guy with these kind of flat butts here. We don't have a whole lot to really lock in. Okay, let's try one of them up on the, on the stand there. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, we'll uh, hit one of those steel targets. <laughs> now, see, I was shooting low, and it, and it still was right at the top of the target. Let's hit the other one. <laughs> oh, I knocked my my jug down. Okay, so that's four. Let's shoot another jug. Oh, I missed it. Doggone it. It's really hard when they're not shooting on. Your instinct is to to pull right up and when you're on target, fire. So let's see how this one goes. Try this old stripper clip again. Oh, this one's not wanting to work so, so hot. Or maybe I didn't have it loaded right. What is going on here? Well, I think we've got some operator error going here. I was just bragging on these stripper clips. Oh, there we go. For some reason that one hung up there. All right, so there we go. Boy, I'd hate to be in combat and have that happen. Imagine you kind of freak out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna shoot at uh, those longer ones up the hill first. Then if I need a couple extra shots, I'll have them. Okay, we'll do the one on the left. Oh, must have shot it high and knocked the cap right off of it. Okay, we'll do that one furthest one up there. Oh, no doubt about that one. Okay, we'll come back to this other one and shoot even a little bit lower this time. Oh, there we go. Starting to get used to shooting low now. Let's just go ahead and hit another jug here. <laughs> One more shot. We'll put it on steel. <laughs> oh, what fun shooting these old Russian muskets. And what history behind them, you know. If this old musket could talk, what stories it would tell. Now we can tell by the condition of this musket that it saw hard use. And that's an indication that it probably saw combat use. But we have a couple of other indications as well. Now in Mike Carrick's research, he found that there were several of these muskets with a Cyrillic P, like this one, stamped right over Winchester's proof mark. And it's doubtful Winchester would have allowed that at the factory. This was probably something that was done um, in Russia. And he found others that had the same mark and all of them showed signs of heavy use and some kind of um, arsenal repairs. And we can see just right in front of it here where we've got a crack in the handguard and then we've got a, a sliver of wood put in over the top and glued in. Now that's, that's a pretty typical uh, arsenal type repair. So most likely this is a gun that, that saw a lot of action, went in for, for repairs to the uh, arsenal by an armorer and back out into the field. So as I was shooting those jugs there, my backup camera either malfunctioned or more than likely it was just operator error. But anyway, so it wasn't recording, so we're, we're forced to take five more shots, dang it, and uh, show you at least a, a few jugs getting detonated here, hopefully. Let's see if we've got this 
stripper clip figured out a little better now. There we go. Okay, let's let's uh, make a little red mist here. Okay, let's go for those jugs up on top. Oh, no doubt about that one. Uh-oh, shot just left of it. Let's try it again. Oh, there we go. And let's hit a little steel. <laughs> oh, shot over the top. Doggone it. Well, doesn't get much better than that, though. Russian contract 1895 Winchester musket. Well, ain't that a pair to draw to? Two Russian contract 1895 Winchesters. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If not, then... I'm afraid your daddy didn't raise you right. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Uh, until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.